In this getting started video, I'm going to touch briefly upon working with samples. It's a topic that we'll get into more detail with later videos. Uh, but if we go into the render settings, I'm going to click on this little arrow, this little arrow icon to open up the kernel settings in the attribute editor. Of course, I'm in the space limo scene again. And uh, this has all the settings related to our kernel. So the kernel determines how the light is calculated in the scene, how it reacts with the surfaces that you see in the scene, as well as overall image quality. The first most important setting that I want to touch upon is this kernel type. So if I switch between direct light, path trays, and PMC, in this particular scene, you're not going to see much of a difference, but it really depends on what's going on in the scene. The direct light is the least physically accurate but fastest way to get a nice uh, realistic re render of your scene. Uh, path trace is more physically accurate uh, but a little bit slower than direct lighting. And then PMC is the most physically accurate uh, but also the slowest of these three render kernels. So generally speaking, it's a good idea to start with direct light and adjust the materials and the scene and the lighting and if you get to a point where your lighting is not looking realistic or your materials are not looking quite right you can try path tracing that will generally create a more physically accurate result if you're working in a scene that has a lot of caustic light patterns through transparent or refractive surfaces or highly reflective surfaces you may find that PMC will give you the best result but it is the slowest and of course, info channel, it just allows you to see things like wireframe and z-depth and ambient occlusion so that you can get sort of information from your scene and how the render is being calculated. Let's go back to direct light really quickly. If you look in the kernel settings, you'll see that there are rollout menus for each of the kernels. So once you choose a kernel, say it's direct light, then you would go down to the direct lighting se um, settings and choose the specific uh, options that will allow you to optimize the scene. So whether it's the GI mode or the amount of uh, specular bounces or glossy bounces, image occlusion distance, etc. If you're working with uh, path trace, if you're working with path trace and you want to ignore the direct lighting settings, go down to path tracing and adjust these settings down here. Now the way that Octane works is as the scene renders, it will continue to calculate until it reaches this max sample setting. And you can see up here that we have some statistics on what's going on in terms of the memory and how close we are to that final setting. So if I uh, make a change in the scene, let's say I move the camera and then release, you can see that the samples are being calculated here and it keeps going until it reaches that set value of 1200. Now the optimal value that you set in your scene is going to change depending on the scene. So there's no rule as to what the best option for max samples is. So if your scene is fairly complex, if there's a lot of light bounces going on or a lot of light passing through reflective, passing through transparent or refractive surfaces, you might have to increase the max sample value to resolve all the noise that you see in the scene. So again, it's gonna change from one scene to the next. But if, you, uh, if it renders and it reaches that max value and you're still seeing some noise, you can try raising the max samples to get a better result. And then, of course, you can also go down here and start fine-tuning these options to help resolve the noise. So every scene is going to be different, and it is a little bit of an art form to find the best settings to uh, optimize uh, your scene, depending on what you're trying to achieve with your render. Now, of course, if you set the max samples too high, uh, it's just going to keep calculating until it hits that max sample setting. And it's not really a big deal if you're just rendering out a still frame and you're testing various options, because anytime you make a change, it's going to start the render over again. But if you're doing a batch animation where you're rendering a sequence of frames and you set this too high, and let's say you set it to 10,000 and you only need like 200 samples, well then each frame in the batch render is going to render until it hits that 10,000 samples uh, even though you don't need it. So that's just going to add time to your render. So you do want to be careful that this is not set too high so that you're not wasting time or resources when you're rendering a, a number of frames. But that's a basic outline of the workflow of working with Octane for Maya. Generally set your kernel, 
and then adjust the settings accordingly until you get the desired result.